everyone, Gino here. Hope you all doing well. And for today's video, we're going to take a look at the very affordable 35mm manual lens from Seven Artisans. This is a review of the Seven Artisans 35mm f1.2 manual prime lens. Let's go. Before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to BJ Galagata, Jan Balde, Bisaya TV, Nogis Bagaong, Comfort Zone Clothing. Thank you guys for your never ending support. By the way, please subscribe to help the channel grow. It will be highly appreciated. And comment down below if you want to be featured on my next video. Seven Artisans is a Chinese based lens manufacturer that offers affordable manual lenses. The company makes lenses designed for APS A cameras that are compatible with Sony E mount, Fujifilm X mount, Micro Four Thirds, and Canon EF M mounts. Just a quick disclaimer, Seven Artisans did send me this copy for free, not because I'm sponsored or it's a review item. They sent me this because I won their Christmas giveaway contest last year, but this will not influence my review or opinion about the product. What we have here is the Seven Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens for Sony APS-C. This lens is a 52.5mm full frame equivalent. It's basically the nifty 50 or the all-around focal length for the APS-C realm. A noteworthy feature of this Seven Artisans lens is its very bright f1.2 aperture. The aperture size is very large which is going to be great for low light and for blowing out the background or getting delicious bokeh. The 35mm f1.2 comes in this plain white 7 artisans box. Um, and inside, we'll get a manual and the lens itself. By the way, I've already unboxed this uh, earlier, so I'm just doing this for the sake of the unboxing experience. Like the 7 Artisans 55mm f1.4, the 35mm f1.2 also looks like a vintage lens. Um, but this one is significantly smaller when compared to the 55mm. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in the 55mm f1.4 lens, I also did a review of it. And uh, you can check that out on the link here. The lens is very compact and only weighs 150 grams. Uh, the vintage design of this lens should work very well on Fuji and Leica bodies. Uh, the lens barrel is uh, made of metal. Um, the mount is also made of metal, so as you can see here. No autofocus connectors because this is a manual lens. Um, it has no weather sealing gaskets as well. It comes with a metal slip-on lens cover and underneath uh, we can see the uh, front glass element. Okay, Seven Artisans, he has a 53mm uh, filter thread. It has a gear-like autofocus ring to uh, match its retro design. It's very smooth and well dampened and I find it uh, very comfortable to use on my Sony a6400 when I'm using this one for focusing. And here are the sample photos and videos taken on the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens. And here are the sample photos and videos taken on the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens. First, I'll be showing photo samples of the 7 Artisans 35mm in an uncontrolled environment or setup. And then I'll show image samples when it's used in a studio or a controlled setup. So here's the first photo. Basically, it's a detail shot of my cousin uh, driving my brother's car with the steering wheel and a speedometer gauge being the main subject. I like the overall composition. Uh, the 35mm focal length is very good for detail shots, especially in tight spaces like inside a moving car or vehicle. 
I could have increased the sharpness if I bumped up the shutter speed to at least 1 of a second to compensate uh, for stability, uh, distance, and my A6400 is not stabilized and the car was running at 40 kilometers per hour. Here's a sample photo of a moving subject. Uh, the light was very harsh in this photo. I had to stop down the aperture to f4 uh, or maybe it was f8 uh, to widen the focus plane and to limit the harsh light that's coming into the sensor. I like the compression that the 35 millimeter lens put out. Uh, I was able to freeze the, the holy water in the air as the breeze blesses the car uh, because my shutter speed was at 1 648 of a second. Pretty happy with the overall sharpness of this image. Aside from detailed shots, you can also get away with wide group shots with the 35mm focal length. Here's a sample detail shot when the subject is at a distance. I was able to nail focus this time at f1.2 aperture. I like this image very much because uh, the subject is in focus and sharp. Uh, if we zoom in here, there's a pile of uh, bokeh balls on this side of the background and on uh, this side, uh, bokeh rendition is very smooth. Purple fringing is present in high contrast areas like the subject's hair, um, here, and uh, black bag strap here purple fringing compared to seven artisans 55 millimeter f 1.4 uh, this lens is a bit better in terms of handling purple fringing here's another candid shot i was lucky i nailed focus on this photo at f 1.2 uh bokeh on this image is very creamy and you can appreciate the narrow uh, plane of focus of an f1.2 aperture uh, the hands here uh, is out of focus even though it's quite near to the focusing point which is the subject's eye uh, no purple fringing found on this photo here's a sample photo at f2.8 i like the overall contrast of this image bokeh is not as dreamy as an f1.2 Here's another sample photo at f1.2. Again, background blur or bokeh is very smooth. I failed to nail focus on the subject on this photo, uh, but still, I like it. Uh, I like the image overall. Uh, the narrow plane of focus really adds a dreamy look to the image. Here's a sample photo at f8. Clarity and sharpness have increased overall. You can see more details on the subject's face and hair. Um, it's definitely sharper than the first two images. Plane of focus has been increased and now we can see more information about the background. Here's another dreamy photo at f1.2. Uh, the background has been blurred out. And if we look closely on the lower right part of the image, uh, we can see a tiny bit of lens flare. Here's a sample photo of a flower bud with the lens wide open at its minimum focusing distance of 35 centimeters. Uh, the background is completely blown out. Bokeh rendition is very smooth and creamy. Uh, the closer you are to the subject, the narrower the plane of focus is going to be. Here's another sample photo wide open at its minimum focusing distance. Uh, subject is soft with very creamy bokeh. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another portrait shot at f2.8. Stopping down bumps the contrast up. As you can see on the image, I like the contrast, sharpness. Here's another one at f1.2. Here's another one back at f1.2. Uh, I like how the building in the background got blurred out. Um, I like the shadowy vibe of this image as well. And uh, there's like a streak of light uh, that's beaming on the side of the subject's head here. Um, so I like, the, I like the picture. 
and here is the money shot a raw portrait photo with lens flare uh, you need to purposely angle the lens against the light uh, to get uh, this effect the shape and quality of lens flare will depend on the angle and uh, the light source here's another raw sample Subject is sharp. Another one. Here's a JPEG sample. By the way, uh, the position and amount of lens flare is up to your creative preference. Uh, so guys, if you want to be more clinical on the outcome of your image, uh, meaning you don't want like floss, like lens flare, uh, the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 is not for you. And here are some of the sample images when the lens is used in a controlled setting or studio setup. All images were shot on JPEG, uh, particularly the portrait ones. Uh, S-curve has been added to increase overall contrast. I also bumped the saturation a bit and toned down the mid-tone contrast just to give a softer look on the subject's skin. Okay, so that's for the portrait photos. Okay, so here is a sample portrait picture of my beautiful wife at f1.2. I'm using a diffuse 5500K or 5500 Kelvin light bulb for my key light and some warm fairy lights in the background. This image demonstrates how narrow the focus plane is at f1.2. Uh, the focus was set on the subject's eye and face. As you can see, everything in the foreground is soft and the background has been blown out as well. Again, you can still have a sharp looking photo at f1.2 with this lens. Here's another sample portrait of my wife. I missed focus here by a bit and the image still looks good in uh, my opinion. Uh, it's a bit soft because I missed focus but I think the softness added some dreamy look to the overall vibe of this photo. Here's another sample portrait where I nail focus uh, on the subject. Uh, Bokeh balls are circular in the middle and uh, are oblong. Uh, on the corners here's another sample portrait of my beautiful wife uh, the closer the subject is at f1.2 the creamier the background is going to be as you saw on the flower bud pictures earlier i love how sharp the subject is and how the bokeh balls got rendered in the background bokeh balls are rendered super clean uh, there's no onion ringing or uh, blotching or staining inside the bokeh balls subject is in perfect focus uh, i'm feeling a bit creative on this photo so i've added purple accents here uh, i used by the way i was using the uh, yc onion brownie rgb light Shout out to our friends at YC Onion. You can find my review of this RGB light on the description. Here's another portrait of my gorgeous wife at f1.2. I played around with the color temperature and ended up with this warm photo. Here's another creative portrait of my wife with purple accent lights. Again, the subject is tack sharp. Another portrait shot. Here's a low light sample at f1.2. Uh, shutter speed was set at 148 of a second and ISO was only at 320. Um, the only light source used was the fairy light. It's a bit of purple fringing here. Here's a sample portrait of my beautiful wife using natural light from our window. Uh, this one, uh, this is one of my favorite photos of the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2. Again, with that dreamy out of focus vibe and clean vocal balls. Here's my favorite portrait photo of my wife using natural light, again with that dreamy out of focus vibe and excellent vocal balls on the background. Super clean, no onion ringing. 
and my beautiful one. Here's a sample photo at f1.2 at minimum focusing distance. Here's how the fairy lights look in focus. It has a warm tone and it's not that bright. Super love how the bokeh got rendered on this photo. Bokeh balls here looks amazing. Here's a sample photo at um, f1.2 minimum focusing distance. Uh, the only thing lighting my subject here are light our light source coming from the back. I have here a monitor, uh, fairy lights here on the rear, and some RGB lights coming out on my computer. Um, I love how the image came out on the shot, especially the bokeh. Here are my sample still photographs. Uh, I've taken several pictures of this beautiful flower bouquet. I got this as a Valentine's gift to my one and only wife, uh, my darling wife. Uh, by the way, shout out to Rain Blooms by Bambi for this wonderful flower bouquet. Sobrang sulit, sobrang ganda. I leave their Facebook link below on the description if you guys are interested. First image is a JPEG shot at F4. Subject is very sharp, but the uh, here the subject is very sharp, but the corners were still soft at F4. Corner here. Corner here, not much, but still soft. Here, corner still soft. When we go, when we go to the middle, detail, tons of details here on middle area, but on the corners, details very soft. Here's a JPEG shot at f2.8, close to the minimum focusing distance. Uh, the subject is stack sharp uh, with the background out of focus. So here is a raw shot at f2.8, close to minimum focusing distance again. Super love the details on this picture. There is definitely a perceivable bump in clarity and detail with Sony RAW files uh, when compared to JPEG. Here's a raw shot at f1.2, subject is still tag sharp, and the background has become blurrier. Here's another raw photo at f1.2, same result, subject is still very sharp. Here's a sample photo of an f1.2 at its minimum focusing distance, super blurry background, as you can see. Here's another sample of that super blurry background another sample it's super dreamy here is another sample another one so it's very beautiful image is very beautiful another one another one another one so yeah, so those are, those are some of my sample still shots using this uh, lens. So this is the last photograph. So I, and that's it for the still still photography part of the Seven Artisans 50 35 millimeter f 1.2. The lens unique character is still present on videos, and the footages are still sharp. It's a good B-roll lens. Overall, I'm very happy and satisfied with the images that I'm getting with the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2.
the things that I like about the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens. The small size and lightweight fits well on APS-C cameras. I also find the focus ring very ergonomic and smooth. Accidental changes of the aperture values when setting up focus are minimal because the rings are fairly distant from each other. The focus ring has a gear style design that is very distinctive and the aperture ring is located at the far end adjacent to the lens mount. The f1.2 aperture is extremely bright which is great for low light and it's still unique because we don't have a 35mm f1.2 that has autofocus yet. Uh, if you want autofocus, the closest lens to compare it, uh, is the Sony 35mm lens with OSS but that has an aperture of f1.8 and a steep price of $400. You can also get the Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens. The aperture is fairly close to f1.2, but it is 5mm shorter than the 7 Artisans. It has good enough center sharpness, wide open at f1.2. If you nail the subject focus, it is stack sharp. Contrast does improve at f2.8. Beautiful flares and minor vignetting when the aperture is wide open. Add unique character in a vintage vibe to the images coming out of this lens. Mind you, the flares can be overwhelming at times, so be wary with your composition. This lens offers good value. You'll be getting a very fast f1.2 lens with dreamy bokeh rendition organic or out-of-the-camera lens flare and good enough optical clarity for a very low price of 145 US dollars or 6,990 Philippine peso. The things that I don't like much is that it is hard to hit focus at f1.2 even with focus assist turned on, especially on uncontrolled settings. It will definitely take a bit of getting used to and practice to master this lens at f1.2 because the plane of focus is paper thin. Lens does vignette a bit but it is not really noticeable in the real world. Purple fringing is pressed in high contrast areas which I think is very tamed considering that this is an f1.2 lens. Corners are still soft even if stopped down at f8. This is noticeable when shooting close to the minimum focusing distance. Switching lenses is going to be a cumbersome task with the 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens. The lens barrel is tiny and slippery and it forces you to use the focus ring and aperture ring so you could get a grip when you are unmounting the lens. For the final verdict, it's not the sharpest and most clinical 35mm out there but it does make up for unique character and cheap pricing. If you want to break out of the norm, create artsy images and get that dreamy surreal look organically for a low price of 6,990 Philippine Peso or around 145 US dollars, 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 delivers and does not disappoint. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next one. This is Gino. Peace.